Lindsay and Jeremy. Give it up for Lindsay and Jeremy. Amazing. God's amazing. And so are you. I'm going to be singing that all day now. How about you? Woo! Woo! Yeah. So welcome to March. And doesn't it feel like June? <laughs> I mean, for real. I mean, it is so gorgeous out there. And think about all the flowers that are coming through. It's, it's just wonderful. Talk about living in the moment. You know, nature lives in the moment. It doesn't follow any kind of doctrine, any kind of plan. It doesn't follow what it's supposed to do or how it's supposed to show up. I just love it. And um, based a little bit, um, well, we're going to cover our global vision statement first. That's what I've got on the slide first, isn't it, honey? And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, I'll see if you, uh, where you are on your homework that I gave you last Sunday. So Global Vision, uh, as you know, we are now uh, one of uh, over 150 centers um, in the United States and Canada and, and some in a few other countries in the world that are following this Global Vision of 2016. And it is creating a world that works for all. I changed it because I, as I always explain to you every Sunday, I don't really consider it to be everyone. I consider it to be all because it includes the four-legged and the winged creatures and the, the bugs and the plants and the trees and the flowers. We're creating a world that works for all folks, not just people. So here is our uh, affirmation and what we know to be true from this global vision. And I invite all of us to affirm that together right now. We see a world that works for everyone where all life is honored as expressions of the divine, where people live according to spiritual truth, where humanity awakens to spiritual magnificence, where humanity rediscovers personal creative power, where we live as one global family, where kinship with all life prospers, where unity and connection is emphasized, where forgiveness is the norm, where spiritual guidance is valued, where we are called to conscious social action, where people have enough food, homes, and a sense of belonging, where there is peace, harmony, and justice for all, where resources are valued, cared for, and shared, where communities are meaningfully involved in service to the world, and where there is a renewed emphasis on beauty, nature, creativity, art, and aesthetics. Can you guys get behind that? Yeah. Yes, I can. I'm so excited. And you know, it's the, it's the perfect summary of what we're all about, I believe, uniquely and individually here within this community and then how we show up within this community. Every single decision that we make is based on what we believe. And it's really encaptured so beautifully in that. And so we are now into March, and the March's theme is realizing the power of the mind and spirit. Now, globally, it's realizing the power of the mind. So I added and spirit because, in my opinion, they go together, especially in what we are here teaching and being and being an expression of. So I added the word and spirit. So we're realizing the power of the mind and spirit. So let's check in on your homework a little bit. Last week we covered this slide. <clears throat> there we go. So I asked you all to go through the week and really discern and see what bubbles up for you regarding this question. What is that one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will become easier or unnecessary? So did you guys have anything bubble up for you? Did you think about this? No hands. <laughs> okay, I got a hand up. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. And then the other, the other thing that I had asked you to do is to gossip. Yeah, I asked you to gossip. Yeah, I did. I asked you to gossip about yourself. Yes. Gossip about yourself. Tell yourself how amazing you are and how beautiful you are and how connected to source you are because guess what, folks? That's called prayer. And that's what we do here more than we do anything else. And that was my answer to the other slide last week was, you know, I really thought about that because that gentleman um, presented at the conference and he gave us that homework, which I brought back and gave to you. And all kinds of answers kept popping up for me as to what that one thing would be. And then I distilled it down. And what I came up with was prayer. That was the one thing 
that if I focused on and concentrated on and did, everything else became unnecessary. Everything else. Because when we enter into that vibrational alignment energetically with that which we are affirming and know, and then later this week, this month, we're going to get into all of the scientific formulas around that. But for right now, just imagine what happens when we enter into that vibrational alignment energetically with what we know and affirm about ourselves, about our life, about others. It shows up every single time. It shows up. And so for this morning, our focus and our intention is all on we believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. Would you all agree to that? So, of course, God is as personal as we allow God to be, the divine spirit, whatever word you use and whatever word you resonate with when you, when you think of that which is the sum of all your parts, yet is, is also greater than all of your parts. And so the science of mind point of view for this morning's lesson is happiness is a result of being in right relationship to the indwelling presence. And we're going to talk a little bit about what I mean by right relationship that life is worthwhile, and the life that is worthwhile flows from the enthusiasm that springs from the center of one's being. So my question is, are you playing hide and seek with the divine? And you might think, well, what, what do you mean by that? Have you ever tried to hide from the divine? Have you ever thought, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I would really like to experience this kind of life or that kind of life, but it doesn't pertain to me. Have you ever seen little babies? Little babies cooing and laughing and playing? Can you easily look at that little baby and say, that's the divine. That's the divine in expression. Or think of the most beautiful, majestic nature scene that you've ever seen in your life. And you think, that's the divine. You know, in our Thursday night class, someone said that um, that's how they connect with the divine more than anything is through nature. And they feel euphoric when they're in that presence. So that's the divine. So if the little baby is the divine and that majestic, euphoric feeling that you have when you're in nature, that nature is the divine. How is it at all possible that you are not? Because aren't you a part of that experience? Weren't you at one time a cute, precious little baby that laughs and plays? Yes. And we are a part of that majestic nature, that majestic look of nature. We're all a part of that. And so what I want to know is, Raise your hand if you've ever hidden from the divine. And how did that feel? Not good. Separate, definitely. So this is really funny. Um, when, we, when we play hide and seek or when little kids play hide and seek, haven't you ever discovered that if, if they can't see, they think nobody else can see them? <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? So I'm going to show you some examples of that. There's one. <laughs> He is definitely hiding here. We don't know. Where is he? Where is he? He's not there. <laughs> Next one. So here's a great example. <laughs> Long as the face is covered, right? Usually it's the face that's covered. Now this one, this one took a little bit of a different, uh, a little bit of a different tactic there. The body's covered and the face is showing. I just laughed so hard when I saw that. But I would imagine they're all playing hide and seek. They don't want to be found. And then, you know, animals do it, too. I love this. As long as you can't, if I can't see, you can't see my face. You don't know I'm here. <laughs> I just love it. So when we hide from the divine, we have, oh, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. Absolutely. Can't see me. Hiding. Hiding from the divine. But what, what did we notice that was uh, true for each one of those slides? We could see them, right? I mean, it was obvious that there was a child or a body or legs or a face there. We can see them. The same thing is true. We may think we're hiding from the divine because we are telling ourselves this, this 
false belief in the moment that we're not good enough or that we're not worthy. But that doesn't mean that the divine's any further away from you. You know, that, that sign that's put up every now and then, if God seems far away, who moved? You know, our consciousness moved, our belief in the divine moved. But we can move close and, and just as quickly as we moved away. And folks, that generally occurs because of what I'm happy to report is I don't think is the norm anymore consciously on this planet, but for a while, for a long while, we've been fed all of this religious doctrine that there is this thing we must do to get closer to God, or there is a certain way we're supposed to act, or a certain particular ceremony we're supposed to do, or we're supposed to, you know, get on our knees, bow down to a particular person or a particular faith. I know that we all know in this room that that's just not the case. Now, I'm not dissing those particular religions because anything that ignites the spirit and the belief and the insight of the divine within someone, I support that wholeheartedly. But we've kind of cut to the chase. We know that there really isn't a particular action or a particular doctrine or a particular book that we have to swear allegiance to or follow to be closer to the divine. Because what is the thing that we know more than anything? And I'm going to ask you this question. Where is the divine? Where's the divine? Let me hear you. Everywhere. Does that exclude you? So what are you saying? The divine is within you. The divine is within you. All the time or just Monday through Friday? Just asking. Just on Sundays, right? <laughs> just on Sundays. So all the time, the divine is within you. Do you know how awesome that is? Do you know how powerful your ability to have the divine show up in your life every single moment, how powerful that is when we hold that front and center at all times? Now, there are times when we play hide and seek with the divine. And we find that, I have found, that external situations and circumstances tend to cause us to enter into that game. But let me tell you, folks, you are it. You are always it in that game. You are always it in playing hide and seek with the divine. I know that there's times when we seek the divine, when it feels so far away and we look everywhere. That's where we're seeking for it. And sometimes we do it frantically. Outside of ourselves, we do that allowing, that begging, that pleading for directions, that pleading for guidance, that handling of our, our own innate, beautiful power over to these outside forces. And we look to the outside forces to give us the truth that we already have within us. And it feels like that we're just never going to quite make it. It's like being really, really hungry and thinking that we're eating, but we're really just eating air. Kind of like eating rice cakes. You guys remember rice cakes? <laughs> that was like eating air. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about? You know, think about a time when you're really, really hungry and you're eating air. That's not going to satisfy you, is it? No, it's not. It's not going to satisfy you at all. And so in our lesson today, the whole reason why I'm bringing this up is that our ability to feel happiness, our feel, ability to feel in sync, with those beautiful powers of nature, the majestic, the euphoric feelings, that ability to feel that way is in direct relation to how much we know, affirm, and live and express that belief that the divine dwells within us. Because if we truly know that the divine dwells within us, how would we show up? How would we speak to ourselves? How would we gossip about ourselves? How would we pray? How would we affirm with about all things and all people? So let's go to the next slide. Rumi, love Rumi. This isn't our Rumiism for the day, but this is good. I looked in temples, churches, and mosques, but I found the divine within my heart. Folks, that's where we find the divine. I guarantee you that if you think it's about looking outside of yourself, you will forever be looking for it. We find it within ourselves. So let's go to the next slide. 
People do not need to be saved or rescued. People need to need knowledge of their own power and how to access it. Do you have knowledge of your own power? And I know you do, because when I asked you where is the divine, you all agreed that it's everywhere present. And I said, does that exclude you? And you guys said, no. So I know that you know where it exists. The tricky part is, do I always know how to access it in the moment when I'm feeling challenged? Do I always know how to access it in the moment if I'm feeling stressed? Or if I was holding a particular expectation of how something's supposed to be and it's not that way, and then we feel separated, separated from our source, separated from what we, what we know is to be true. Next slide, please. We are already in the presence of God. What's absent is our awareness. So what can we do? I mean, it's great, it's easy, wonderful, isn't it? When we're sitting in this room and we're singing the songs and we're, we're hanging with our peeps and we're loving getting to see everybody and we just so feel the presence of the divine and we are on it and we're in it and we're swimming in it. What about when it doesn't feel that way? What can we do? How can we remind ourselves? It's like that quote what is the, in question, what is that one thing that we can do that makes everything else unnecessary? What is it? What can we do? And I tell you folks, for me, it's a daily practice. It's a daily uncovering. It's a daily realization. And it's a daily journey deeper and deeper and deeper into that level of awareness that allows me to truly know that I am so one with the divine that it is nearer than the air. It is nearer than the air that we breathe. And I know that my level of happiness and degree of experiencing it is in direct relation to how much I am living that in the moment. I know that. So next slide. Here's our roomism for the day. Love this. I absolutely love this quote. There is a life force within your soul. Seek that life. There is a gem in the mountain of your body. Seek that mind. Oh, traveler, if you are in search of that, don't look outside. Look inside yourself and seek that. So I am inviting all of us to have that be our habit, that we seek ye first, the kingdom of the divine within us. I know that it's not the usual and not the norm. I'd like to, to become the usual and the norm for me, but I know that when I am in that midst of feeling a sense of separation or something's blowing up or something, you know, you know what it is, it's life, you know, you know what that is. What if our habit was to go within? And I know a lot of you do that, that prayer and meditation, Foster, he's a, he's a wonderful example of that just love this man. He is like a walking embodiment of prayer and meditation. So seek ye first inside. That presence dwells within. Let's go to the next slide. So the power of the mind is a mere reflection of the power of the atma imminent in humans. That is nothing but God. And atma imminent, imminent is from the Upanishads. And it basically means um, the, the air, the breath of God, all of life. And I just really love that quote because it goes great with the next one. But it says here, that is nothing but God. So the power of the mind. So let's just really distill this for a second. The power of the mind. So let's move into the observer. The observer that's hearing my voice, that's sitting in your chair, that feels the chair. But there's this observer part of you that is observing the power of your thoughts right here and now, is a mere reflection of the power of the divine in humans that is nothing but God. So let's go to the next slide. I love this. So God, or whatever you call the eternal source, works in mysterious ways. Oh, what? Not really. You know, I think we're over and over and over taught to believe that. Even in metaphysics. It goes back to that doctrine, that religious doctrine. Mysterious. You know? It all depends on what day it is and which way the planets are and how the stars are aligned. 
you might be able to get close to it. Is that true? No. But even in metaphysics, they like you to believe that, right? So I love this slide. Not really. God is love. Let me, let me just break it down for you, this, this person says. God is love. I'm a creation of God. I am love. When I choose love as the guide for my thoughts, I feel good. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, he or she goes on to say, this ain't rocket science. I like that because I like simple. I'm not saying it's easy, but I really like simple. It doesn't have to be mysterious. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Folks, I think it comes right down to love. I see you. I see the divinity within you. And by God, if I can see the divinity within you, that's got to mean it's within me, right? So think of those that you love. Think of of family members in your life or, or little, the little babies again or the animals that we care for and love so much. We see the divine in them, don't we? By God, then it's got to be in us. So playing that hide and seek with the divine, it's that sense of separation. We lose that feeling and that essence of oneness. I'm into happiness, folks. Are you into happiness? Yeah, I am. I am into happiness. I'm glad to hear you are too, Jeremy. Right on. Fist bump, baby. So next slide. Take a moment today and purposefully connect with your higher self. It is the part of you that is always connected with source. It is filled with love, compassion, and wisdom. It holds no judgment or fear. It is you in, it is you in your purest form of life. And you might look at that and think, oh, that's no biggie. I got this. I mean, we even prayed in church today, right? No, I'm talking about take that moment. Do you do that daily? Do you take that moment and truly stop everything and go within? Let's close our eyes and do that now. So just take a moment and connect with however you resonate with the divine that is located at the very center of your being and become even more familiar with it than you've ever been before. And while you have your eyes closed, I'm going to ask you to imagine the best version of you that's possible. Imagine the best version of you. That's who you really are. For you to be able to imagine it, that is who you really are. So I'm going to invite you to let go of any part that doesn't believe it. Is there any part of you coming up right now that says, oh my God, you cannot possibly be that best version? What about this? What about this? What about this thing you did back in 1999? Mm -mm. Not the truth. This is your moment right here and now. Let go of anything you may be holding on to that says that it's not possible for you to be the best version of yourself. You can open your eyes now. He did it with you. <laughs> so happiness, it's a beautiful thing. The science of mind view on happiness is being in right relationship with the indwelling presence. So think about that for a moment. What do I mean by that? To be in right relationship with the indwelling presence. I think that's probably pretty personal, probably pretty unique for each one of us. But think of how important it is to stop and reflect on that. What is my right relationship with the indwelling presence that we have already established this morning is within 
us, within me, within you. What is that right relationship? Is it playing hide and seek? Probably not. Is it debating? Arguing? I know that's the best, best possible version of myself, but nope, it can't possibly be because of this, this, and this. That might not be the right relationship either. I'm just asking. Happiness is the result of being in the right relationship with the indwelling presence. So what are we basically saying here? Happiness, spirituality, kind of an inside job. And I know we talk about that a lot. You know, we, we, um, we affirm, we poetically state it a lot of times that that, that big beautiful house or the big jewelry or whatever it is that you're after, whatever that might be that catches your eye, that's wonderful and that's a unique way that you're expressing yourself and that's beautiful. Yet we all know that that's really not going to bring you happiness, right? Well, do we know what's going to bring us happiness? Do we truly know? Let's go to the next slide. So that was kind of an addition to the other one. Let's go to the next slide, please. There we go. Your complete happiness is inevitable. I've got really good news for you folks. It's kind of like this. You can block the sun with your hand, but the sun is still there. So it is with universal truth. It's always there, whether we recognize it or not. So the worst case scenario is that you're just delaying your own happiness. That's the worst case scenario. You can run, but you cannot hide. You can play hide and seek all you want with your innermost presence of the divine that we say is the true, that right relationship is the true experience and expression of happiness. You can, you can run all you want, but it's there, it's there. And all you have to do is come into awareness with it. And, and awareness is a wonderful, beautiful thing. You know, there's this story about this little girl in art class that was drawing, and she was really into her drawing. And the teacher was walking around, and the teacher looked down and was like, hey, Sally, what you drawing? And Sally's like, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher goes, well, Sally, nobody knows what God looks like. And Sally goes, they will in a minute. <laughs> I want to be like Sally. <laughs> she didn't even blink. She's like, they will in a minute, because I'm drawing God. That is awesome. Isn't that awesome? So I'd like to ask you, what does God look like to you? If I were to give you all sheets of paper and pens and crayons and said, draw God, what would that be? What do you know about the divine, how do you experience the divine? And I think that that would give us a clue as to where we are in that right relationship with that indwelling presence. Just love that story. So spirit is at the center of each one of us. This is a quote by Ernest Holmes. To it, we may come for guidance, and from it, we may draw both inspiration and the power to live, stand, walk, or sit. The Upanishads says the same thing. It says, the silent one, the knower, ever resting in us, may walk, stand, sit, lie down, and do anything at his sweet will. That's really the truth about life, folks. That right relationship, that essence of happiness, the very essence of who we are in the physical and mental body rests in the idea that was established for us by the infinite. We could no more pump our own heart or fill our lungs without something greater in us doing the work. Would you all agree with that? Are you good with that? Maybe, or maybe I gave you something to think about. Why then do we at times insist on going at this life alone? That sense of separation. Why do we go into that game of hide and seek? Why do we ignore the very thing that is breathing us and allowing us to create? to imagine, to be like little Sally. Don't you just love that? So anytime somebody says <laughs> or tries to discount what it is that you're about doing, just like the teacher did, right there. Let's all be Sally. Let's all be like Sally. 
knowing that, knowing that completely, so that every action that we take, every thought that we take, every word that we speak, we are in that right relationship with the indwelling presence because we have allowed ourselves to acknowledge it firsthand. We've allowed ourselves to truly believe in it. And we've let go of anything and everything that is coming up for us that says, you can't believe this. It's a process. But if we pay attention, more often than not, the process becomes easier, more fluid, more streamlined, more like salad. So here's a, some questions for you that's kind of a litmus test. If you didn't believe what you believe about yourself, what would your new belief be? And do you believe that you can be that way? Some of you may say yes. Some of you may say, hmm, I don't know. Some of you may say no. Do you believe that I believe that you can be that way? Some of you may say yes. Some of you may say I don't know. Some of you may say no. Ernest Holmes says this, the indwelling God is the greatest single factor in our whole lives. It means that there is nothing between us and God and that there is no intermediary. There is no place to go find God. God already exists in the midst of all of us. And if we would try to seek God elsewhere, it would be like God trying to hunt for himself. God is not lost, and neither are we lost. The more completely we are able to see God in everything, the more completely will the one God in all things respond to us. Now, that's a quote. I could easily have replaced the word God with spirit or the divine, and I always welcome you to do the same because I have found, especially in classes and in talking with people, that sometimes certain words of the divine are triggers. And I would say and invite you to go within and look at why that's a trigger and maybe, you know, work on that belief. That's just a little side note. But I, I always am um, a, little, a little aware when I read the log quote for Burtis and he's talking about God and himself, you know, we just got to put in the right words in there that, that's good for us. So I invite you to do that. So we've talked a little bit about if I were to give you pens and paper and crayons, how would you draw God? And whatever drawing you would come up with, do you believe that that too is within you? And I've asked you to think about if you completely erase what it is that you believe about yourself in the moment, what would your new belief about yourself be? And I invite you to go through this week really thinking about that. That right relationship with the indwelling presence of the divine. What is that right relationship for you? And how can you support yourself to be in that right relationship so much so that you feel and experience happiness in all areas of your life, in all of your relationships, in, in all of your, what is before you to do and what is before you to be? Are you happy? Are you happy? So that brings us perfectly to our next experience in a second. But I have an affirmation for you. The indwelling presence is alive, alert, awake, and enthusiastic within me now. I live my life in the knowing of the peace that it brings me and into the lives of those around me. That's the prayer for today. Lindsay and Jeremy, take us into that next experience.